namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya hari krishna dear devotees thank you so much for joining today so we'd like to seek the blessings of shri shri radha mata radha shyam sundar radha um, krishna balaram gonita shila prabhupad guru maharaj and the assembled devotees so that we can have a overview quick overview of uh, chapter 7 of the 12th canto and this is one of the verses in this chapter jayanti would you like to recite etu ji vasya sarkade avidya karma karaka yam janus shainam prabhu avyaktram uttapare translation after ignorance the living being performs material activities and thereby becomes in one sense the cause of the creation maintenance and destruction of the universe some authorities call the living being the personality of underlying material creation but others say he is unmanifest self mm so this is uh, in terms of material Uh, the living entity actually we are the cause in one sense of this material creation because the lord wanted to facilitate our desires so some authorities call the living entity the personality underlying the material creation <laughs> very interesting of course we can't do anything but uh, because the lord wants to fulfill our desires he creates this universe so we are sort of like uh, one of the causes if you like So this chapter is all about the Puranic literatures. In this chapter, Sutta Goswami describes the expansion of the branches of Atharvaid, enumerates the compilers of the Puranas, and explains the characteristics of a Purana. He then lists the eighteen major and uh, Puranas, uh, and finishes his account by stating that any person who hears about these matters from someone in the proper distribution succession will acquire spiritual potency. So Sutta Goswami explains the expansions of the branches of Atharva Ved by the sages. And then he states the authority, authorities on Puranic uh, literatures are. So these are different sages: Tarya, <coughs> Tarya Runi, Kashyap, Savarni, Akritvarna, Varvaran, Vaishambhayana, and Harita. each of them studied one of the six anthologies of the puranas from my father ramahansa ramahansa sutta who was a disciple of shri vyasa now you will remember ramahansa what happened to him uh, although a great uh, great sage um, great pandit of the puranas yet he was um, little rude if you like to balaram when balaram came onto the arena of the sages at nemisharanya he didn't rise from what he was doing he was giving pravachan but he did not stand and balaram noticed some uh, some ego uh, there and uh, he dealt with it <laughs> in quite a drastic way <laughs> i became the disciple so sutta goswami is saying of these six authorities and thoroughly learned all their presentations of puranic wisdom my father divided the puranas into four basic compilations the sage kashyap and i along with savarni and akritavrna akritavrna a disciple of balaram uh, learned these four divisions so then he explains the characteristics of a purana why is a purana called a purana because they have these 10 topics and this was actually covered uh, early on in the shrimad bhagavatam i think in the first or second canto the topics are described of what makes a purana a purana so let we just revising again the creation of the universe so practically every pur- all puranas will have a description of the creation and also the subsequent creation of worlds and beings so describes a primary creation when mahavishnu breathes out and it describes a secondary creation when 
Lord Brahma begins his work. The maintenance of all living beings. So in the Purana will have a description how the living entities are being maintained, their sustenance, the rule of various Manus. So we see that in the Bhagavatam, it's quite a lot of detail on that in uh, Cantos 4 onwards. The dynasties of the great kings, the activities of such kings, alienation, annihilation, motivation, what makes us go, the supreme shelter. So these 10 topics are there. <clears throat> now, what distinguishes Bhagavatam from all the others? Because we just did this in the third canto. What distinguishes Bhagavatam is that the tenth, the supreme shelter is discussed to such a great extent that all the other nine serve the subject of the tenth, um, the supreme shelter, supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. So this is what distinguishes the Bhagavatam from all the other Puranas. The other Puranas don't uh, take into account the um, supremacy of um, Avatari, Swayam Bhagwan, Sri Krishna, whereas Bhagavatam does. And all of the other subjects are in relation to the Supreme Shelter. Other scholars state that the great Puranas deal with these 10 topics, while lesser Puranas uh, may deal with five. So there are higher Puranas, lower Puranas, we'll see that in a minute. In each age, the Lord appears in this world amongst the animals, human beings, sages, demigods. And by his activities in these incarnations, he protects the universe and kills the enemies of Vedic culture. Now he talks about in the reign of each Manu, there are six types of personalities who appear as manifestations of Lord Hari, the ruling Manu, <coughs> so Vaivasati Manu or Swambhu Manu, the chief demigods. So these are all manifestations of, so there's Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, sons of Manus, Indra, the great sages, and the partial incarnations of the Supreme Pasarga. So these six types of persons will come in the reign of every Manu. And this, then there is four types of cosmic annihilation, which are affected by the inherent potency of the Supreme Lord. There's the occasional, the elemental, continuous, ultimate. So we did this a couple of uh, chap few chapters back, discussed about the uh, different types of annihilation. There's one at the end of Lord Brahma's day. Is also one at the end usually of uh, a cycle of um, yugas and then there's the ultimate uh, the continuous one as well right? if, uh, uh, at the end of every life of brahma and the ultimate is when you go back to the supreme lord <clears throat> out of ignorance the living being performs material activities and thereby becomes in one sense the cause of the creation maintenance and destruction of universe of the universe this is the reason why we perform these activities and to facilitate that uh, desire the lord creates this world some authorities call the living entity the personality underlying the material creation while others say he is unmanifest self <laughs> so Sages expert in ancient histories have declared that the Puranas, according to their various characters, characteristics, can be divided into 18 major Puranas and 18 secondary Puranas. So then he lists the 18 major Puranas, which is the Brahma Purana, Padma Puran. Padma Purana often we quote different verses from Vishnu Purana, Shiv Purana, Linga Purana, Garuda Purana, Narad Purana. Bhagavad Puran. So Bhagavad Puran is what we are studying. Agni Puran, Skanda Puran, Bhavishya Puran, Brahma Vaivarta Puran, Makande Puran. Now Makande Puran is very interesting because we'll see in the next few chapters how Makande Rishi is a very 
prominent part of this Bhagavatam. Vaman Puran, Varaha Puran, Matsya Puran, Kurma Puran, and Brahmanda Puranas. So, is that 18? It is indeed. So, the Goswami states, I have thoroughly described to you, O Brahman, the expansions of the branches of Vedas by the sage, great sage, we ask there, his disciples, and the disciples of his disciples. One who listens to this narration will increase in spiritual strength. So this is uh, the end of uh, chapter number seven, um, where uh, Sutta Goswami describes the various Puranas, what makes a Purana a Purana. Any questions? Any comments? Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Krishna Nanivan. Yes, the one which says the living entities are the cause of the creation of this material world. Hmm. Uh, and at the same time, they're not in Avyaktam. Yes, uh, yes, very good. Uh, yeah, we cannot be the cause, isn't it? We are just a yeah. part and the parcel. We are not creating anything. We are, right. we are destroying rather than creating yeah. anything. Yeah, in one sense, absolutely right. We can't, you know, we don't have any potency because that belongs with the Supreme Lord. Hmm. But in another sense, we are creators because uh, it's our desires that the Lord is fulfilling. So, because it's our desires that the Lord is fulfilling, we are regarded as uh, the reason for the creation. So that's why we sometimes are regarded as the cause of the creation. But in, in actual fact, what can we, <laughs> what can we cause to happen? You know, not much. So uh, yeah, it, it, they're both correct in one sense. Uh, it's correct that we are unmanifest self as well because. At the end of the day, we are spirit soul, uh, and temporarily we become manifest, and sometimes we become unmanifest. So essentially, we are unmanifest because ultimately that's our spiritual position. Um, so in that sense, it's it sort of sounds contradictory, um, but it's just explaining it in explaining the living entity's role in this material world in a different way, and our role is basically not. We're not, we're not the direct uh, cause of it, but because of us, it's happened with the indirect cause. <laughs> does that make sense? Yes, it does. Matt. That it's, uh, the whole thing of uh, Bhagavatam is that the Krishna is a creator, maintainer, yes. and the destructor. And then right. this sentence coming in towards the end of the Bhagavad Puran. <laughs> <laughs> it can, it can so, throw you off. Yes. It can. It can. So... <laughs> Yeah, but it's only in so far as uh, the Lord is very kind, he fulfills our desires and the reason for this creation is to fulfill our desires. So in that sense, we are sort of the cause. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you're absolutely spot on. What Bhagavatam, right from the beginning, he says, you know, without Krishna, there wouldn't be the spiritual world, there wouldn't be the material world. Without Mahavishnu's glance, the material world cannot be activated. Mm. So absolutely, what you're saying is right through the Bhagavatam. And at the end, he, this little googly is thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Prabhuji. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prabhupada? Uh, uh, yes, Jema. Uh, Prabhuji. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm coughing very badly. About two, three questions together. Sure, sure. Okay. First, uh, you said about uh, Jai Mataji Prabhuji, and Jai, I can't say Prabhuji. Uh, you said about Balram. Is that the Balram uh, Krishna's brother, or Balram yeah. is different? Yes, it's Krishna's brother. All right. Yeah, yeah. You so must, that's... yeah, that pastime, you may have missed that pastime. Yeah. He was very uh, interesting character. First expansion of Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, yeah. And uh, in, the, in the paragraph, it came uh, any annihilation and Agni, uh, Agni Puran. So, annihilation, what does that mean? Ah, oh, annihilation means uh, how this universe is destroyed, either part of it or all of it. So, every Purana will describe how um, the Lord 
destroys is, is, is the universe. Now, if you remember, in the earlier part of the cantos, uh, there was a description how the false ego merges into something, and then the ether merges into something, and then the mind merges, and then earth, water, air, fire, all they, they all merge into their categories. So in that, that is sort of a description of how the annihilation takes place. So, all right. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. And you said about Agni Puran. So you read all the Purans, some of them I know, some of I don't know. So mm. what's, what it is in the Agni Puran? Is it mm. like a really book or a uh, yeah, scripture or? Yeah, it's like a, it's a scripture, uh, Agni Purana, and it will... I don't know what is in it because we have You read. don't know. No, we okay. haven't read it. But um, essentially those 10 subject matters, creation, alleation, Supreme Lord, they'll all be in there. But it'll be in an angle from Agni Dev's perspective. And Agni oh, right. Dev started to be actually representative of the Supreme Lord, fire. Uh, yes. Fire is required to be representative of the Lord. Thank you, because you know why I'm asking, you might be saying why Prabhupada is asking, uh, see, my, my husband, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm just generally talking uh, that my husband is not well. And every oh. time he keeps saying that his body is burning from inside oh, and he feels, <laughs> he feels really heat inside. Oh. I'm praying every day, like uh, one mala for Agni yeah, Delta, yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, take his all uh, burning out from his body. But he's suffering nearly five years now. And he's, when oh. you touch him, you feel like... He's really hot. Ooh, really? Hot. And he's all the time like this. And I don't know when this heat will go from the body. We are and I, the, the, there is no cure, there's no cure for it. And the doctor said he has to live with it. So mm. when it is uh, summer, it's really hot in his body. That's why I asked you. If, if Agni Puran is something I can read and I get some message. Oh, okay, like... okay, understood. I suspect, probably, uh, this is a his doshas are not in a line. I think, you okay. know, like uh, Kappa, uh, Vita, uh, Vata, all those doshas, and okay. he probably will benefit from some Ayurvedic treatment, especially if yeah. the Western doctors are saying no can do. Uh, this sounds like something that is uh, uh, very much which the Ayurvedic science will uh, tackle this sort of issue because Ayurved looks at it from the inside out, you know, from the body, from the inside of the body. And then it um, looks at the doshas, which is out of sync and tries to bring it back into alignment. So it might yeah. be that. So Ayurved may be the right uh, place to go to yeah. seek some answers. That's all right. Thank you so much. Anyway, very nice you, uh, you took it out. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I've got uh, to mention, uh, when we do prayers, I've got uh, to tell you that uh, there's a death in the family, so I'd like to pray for mm. them. Is my my son's uh, uh, great grand uh, mother in law Oh, okay. My, so, yes. my yeah, my... My daughter-in-law's uh, Nanima passed away today. So oh. we pray for her, yeah? Yeah, definitely. All right. so Thank you. Um, he... Thank you.